everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be recommending some books that are set in the countryside. I love the countryside and during this time I, I miss it man, I miss it. I miss going on trips and we live quite close to the Peak District for example. Uh, I don't like peaks that much, I like flatland more. Anyway, who cares, nobody. I've got hair on my mouth and I can't get it off. Now, before we start, there's still heckin' hair on me. Before we start, this video is problematic. I realise my diversity in my reading is okay. It's not excellent. The, all of these books are by men. This isn't very representative. This isn't diverse reading. And that is a problem. And I'm sorry about that. So if you have any recommendations of books set in the countryside that are not by men, that are by people from the LGBT plus community, that are by people who are not British, then that would be fabulous. There is one person who is not British in this. That's it. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first book I like to recommend, oh, it brings me so much joy. Stories of Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. Oh, it just follows the stories of Winnie the Pooh, who is this little pooh bear who loves honey, and he loves going on adventures with his friends. His friends always seem to be in some kind of sticky situation, which is funny. Um, I was thinking of doing a video, just a silly video, of ranking the Winnie the Pooh characters. If you'd be interested in that, let me know. Oh, I just love it. I love the illustrations. They're beautiful. It just takes me away to someplace else when I read Winnie the Pooh. And you might be thinking, this is a children's book. No! I mean, yeah, it is. But at the same time, you don't have to be a child to enjoy it. It just makes me so happy to read this. <sighs> beautiful. Next, for someone a bit older, or if you just don't read children's books, this is a set of books which are sort of set in the countryside for the most part of them, and that is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So what can I say about Lord of the Rings? Basically, it follows the chosen one trope, so old Frodo Baggins has to destroy the most powerful object in the entire universe. Well, in their universe anyway. So he sets out on an adventure, similar to... Winnie the Pooh. Did I really just compare these? Yes, I did. They both go on adventures. It's wonderful. They both go on adventures in the countryside and they have a jolly good time. Well, they don't really, but let's just pretend they do. And there's ants, like trees that come to life, and there's just what other green things happen in this. There's also lots of dark things that happen in this, but a lot of it is very bright and very green and very springy and it's just lovely. Apart from when it's not, which is a lot of the time. But yeah, you still get that countryside essence, I feel like, from The Lord of the Rings. Next, I'm going to recommend something I've recently read, which I really enjoyed. And that... It's not this book! Why did I get that out? Where is it? It's not The Mayor of Casterbridge, although you could read The Mayor of Casterbridge because that's also set in Tom Hardy's Wessex, which is very, very rural. Where, oh, right, here it is. I haven't read that, that's why I can't recommend it. I have read Far From the Madding Crowd, this is a tragic copy, it's falling apart, that's why there's a big clip in it. Very sad. This is set also in Thomas Hardy's Wessex, which is very rural, it's kind of in the south, never eat shredded wheat, southwest England. Yes, I don't know my easts from my wests. And this follows a lady who's called Bathsheba, or Bathsheba, I think it's Bathsheba, Bathsheba. I never actually said it out loud, it's quite difficult to say. And she's a farmer, which is so cool. Like, she's just such a cool lady. And there are a lot of people who are in love with her. But the thing is, this... I don't feel like this is a romance book. Pride and Prejudice, I don't like, because I feel like it's so focused on marriage and relationships. But this is different. I'm not slating Pride and Prejudice or anything. Like, it's just not for me. But this is like... Um, yeah, it has romance in it, sort of, but it's not a big deal, if you know what I mean. And it's so funny. It's so funny. Like, it just had me giggling a lot of the time. And I've never had that from a classic book, mainly because I haven't read that many. I'm trying to get into classics more. The classics that I have read I do enjoy. Um, even though I just said I don't like Pro and Prejudice. I had to read that for school. So yeah, we definitely recommend. Again, because there's so many farmers in it, it's obviously set in a very rural landscape and yeah wonderful the ending oh oh the ending mmm was not expecting that so yeah would recommend this as well next I'm going to recommend something that you might turn your noses up at and think what the hell uh, which is fair enough to be honest but oh 
I would strongly recommend it. And that is Lyrical Ballads by William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. What is this book? This is a poetry collection written by Wordsworth and Coleridge. And oh, 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 oh. It has so many countryside themes in it. So Wordsworth, in the 19th century, he was very against industrialisation. He thought, oh, look at the beauty of nature. Nature is so wonderful, we shouldn't be destroying it. So that's a common theme in lyrical ballads. And some of it is a bit more pessimistic, like, look what you're doing to the world, people. You're destroying it with your industrialisation. But other poems are just like kind of like love songs to nature. And that's what I love about this book. It's just, mm. again, like Winnie the Pooh, it just takes me away to another place. I was lucky enough to visit Tintin Abbey, which is the abbey on the front. And it, it is quite bleak. It, there are bleak themes in this as well. Uh, but yeah, it just really gives you a different sense of unbeing. Wow, that's pretentious. It just makes you feel like you're in a different world, basically. For me, coming from a very urban landscape, I've lived in suburban towns my whole life, so it's really refreshing to read about grass <laughs> and flowers. And the last one, you might also think, what the hell, that is not countryside. And yeah, it's not English countryside, but I'm going to recommend it anyway. And it is The Alchemist by Paulo something or other. Still can't pronounce his last name. Colo. Colo? Please someone tell me how to pronounce his last name because I can't. The Alchemist, oh, The Alchemist is such a fantastic book. It's definitely the most spiritual and philosophical fiction book I've ever read. So The Alchemist follows the life of a shepherd who I can't even remember his name. What's his name? I think it's only mentioned once. Anyway, beside the point. Um, and he keeps on having these reoccurring dreams about the pyramids of Giza and he thinks he'll find treasure there. And he's quite a poor man in terms of money. Oh god, it's so good. Sorry. It's just so good. And it's set in a very rural landscape, so he starts off in Spain, I believe, and then he treks across the continent, across Europe, and into Africa to find the treasure there. Oh, oh, it's, it's just sublime. It really is. The ending, one of the best endings I've probably ever read. Books that I would recommend. Very countryside. It's wonderful. Like I said, before in this video is a pigeon having a fight um recommend plus some books set in the countryside down below which are not by men by people who are not white are uh, people who are just basically not this that would be wonderful i really hope you like these books if you haven't read them i would really really recommend we do the poo the most because it's just like i said it's a form of escapism and uh, it's just so pure. It's pure and lovely. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.